All right, hey there everybody. Just a quick update here. I got a couple small things I'm doing today on the Mustang. Just some little things I ordered in the mail. Uh, I haven't really been driving it at all during the winter. Right as I parked it in the garage here, I noticed a leak coming from the rear differential housing down there. So I, walked, I looked under there and it, luckily it wasn't coming from the seal from the front, the seal with the drive shaft. Luckily it looked like it was just coming from the pumpkin. The, the 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 silicone they use from the factory I don't know it's only got I think I got under fifty thousand on the car so it's it seems weird that it would be leaking already but anyway I, the only thing I removed that cleaned it up real good and I re-siliconed it put it back in now they still need to be pick up fluid but I'll do that you know pretty soon here I'm gonna pick up some Royal Purple seventy five W one forty it says in the manual to you so. I'm gonna pick some of that stuff up. It's like 20 bucks a quart, so I need a little over two, I think. So I'll pick up three bottles just to be safe. So I'm gonna have Royal Purple in the differential. I already, first thing I did when I bought the car, the first thing I did was uh, drain the manual transmission fluid and put Royal Purple Synchro Mesh manual transmission fluid in there because some people seem to have problems. It's either hit or, hit or miss with these MT82 transmissions where sometimes they're great, sometimes they're terrible right out of the box. So mine was good. There wasn't any synchro problems. The transmission was great. No grinding into gears or anything like that. So I wanted to keep it that way. So I drained the fluid right when I got it at 30 something thousand miles. And I put the Royal Purple in. So I have Royal Purple in both the transmission and the differential, which is fun. But other than that, nothing really new under the hood here. Uh, pretty good in here, just the, uh, just the, the the nice blue Boss 302 manifold cover, or the uh, in, or, pff, coil covers, the intake, the Symposer delete over there. Um, it's, otherwise, you know, I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with the power level now. So I I just got a few little things in the mail, kind of fun to go through here, and you'll notice it actually is a. Some of these are genuine Ford parts, so it's not really aftermarket. And what I decided to go with here is, first of all, I have this nice little genuine Ford part box, and I have a genuine Ford part leather, brand new leather shift boot here. So, along with, I, now th this might be a stretch, but I decided to give this a try. Here are my two normal Mustang keys you get with it. You know, they're nice, but I, I used to have an Audi, uh, 99 Audi A4, and I love the flip keys. and. And now that I don't have the Focus ST anymore, that has the that has the remote uh, the the remote fob that you just keep in your pocket at all times. It kind of sucks having a key poking you all the time. So I went on eBay and found a real real decently cheap one. I think this was 15 bucks for. It's a flip key. It actually has the nice Ford logo on it, and it, it seems to be in pretty good shape. I, you know, they're hit or miss. I decided 15 bucks. Give it a shot, you know, whatever. If it doesn't work, whatever. So yeah, actually, I was really surprised when this came in the mail because I, I was expecting something super cheap. It came in this nice little pouch, big padded pack, nice little clear pouch here in a little baggie. And I was really surprised. The weight is nice. It's got a nice weight to it. And then uh, in the baggie here, the only thing, oh, geez, I drop it, but the only thing is the plastic feels kind, it doesn't really feel as high quality as, a factory one I mean you can I mean even on these factories you can tell this is a little bit better plastic so the, the plastic doesn't feel great especially uh, on the Audi one I had but otherwise you know it's a nice flip key it's got the panic button there it's actually got the nice Ford logo on it which I was surprised and the, you know the, 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 the plastic doesn't feel great but you know and the flip part you know on the on the Audi one it was nice when it flipped open I don't know what they had under here, but it was some kind of metal. So when it flipped open, you could hear a click, you know. But this one is just hitting the plastic, so it doesn't feel as nice. But still, I mean, it's an, you know, compared to this one, it's a nice flip key. When you have it put in, it takes up less spot in your pocket, does it poke you. So the only downside, I want to see how this works now, is when it's in the ignition, it's going to stick out quite a bit further. So we'll see how that works. And I got some, they included some programming instructions here. So hopefully those will work. If not, I can go online and check that out. But you know, it seems it's got a nice LED light when you hit the buttons. You know, the buttons feel kind of cheap. I don't know the clicks. You know, it doesn't feel like a factory part. But I'm supposed from 15 bucks, and it's not. But it did come as a blank, and it was really nice. I actually went to the Ford dealership 
I went around, you know, I didn't, uh, the first place I tried, because I knew they would be overpriced, but I figured, you know, let's see what they want to, just cut a blank key for you. So I brought them these two. I don't know if they need the two to know if you own the car, but I didn't know this at the time, but it really just, uh, it, uh, it pulls apart like that. And otherwise, if you keep it together, it won't fit in their key cutting machine. So he said, oh, take it apart, or you'll see you might have to, you know, I might notice I might have to pound the little pin out of this, this this uh, blank part, just the metal the metal key part, you know, maybe to have that run, have them run through that. But I was able to pull it apart, and then it fit in his machine, so I actually cut it for free, which was really nice. It was awesome. I didn't expect that out of the dealership at all, even though it is just a little cutting machine. They plug it in, and it takes 20 seconds. But it's really cool that they cut it for me, so otherwise it just pulls apart. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is, you know, see if I can get that programmed. Hopefully it works just fine. Everything looks, all the cuts look the same and everything, so it should work, we'll see. And then, so first thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna try to program this thing. Okay, back here, and I uh, got my two, so in order to program, see if this is gonna work, <clears throat> because this is a key that has a transponder in it, so it will only start the car if it, the key is in the ignition and it has the right transponder code, but transponder code. So you would normally have to, if you, if you only have one key for some reason, you would have to take this to the dealership to have them do it and it's crazy expensive, so it sucks. But I still have my two originals, which if you have your two original keys, then you can program another one with the transponder and the remote part. So it sh I should be able, in theory, I should be able to do both. So I got here, I got these instructions. If these don't work, I'll just Google it online, but you have to have your two keys, and I have the one cut, so it should fit in there. I haven't even tried it yet at all, so this will <coughs> this will be right. So, got my two keys, got my instruction book. Let's try this out now. Over here, it's a little tight here. Oh, we'll sneak in, all right. What do we gotta do here now? First it says, programming instructions, transponder key programming instructions. Let's see, for the transponder chip self-program, you will need two Ford original keys working. Both keys need to be Ford OEM cars, and Ford OEM keys aftermarket can't be used. Okay, so we're gonna try that first, or should we try the uh, programming? Let's try the programming. Enter the, enter the car and close all doors, but do not lock the doors. Okay, so unlock, insert a key. So I'll just use this one key here. Insert a key into the ignition and turn from off to on eight times in rapid succession with the eighth turn ending on the on. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Boom. Okay, so we are in programming one now. The doors will lock on to confirmed. To confirm programming mode has been entered. Press any button on the remote one by one. Okay, so there's lock. Okay, so it knew that. Trunk, unlock, and our panic. So we have all of them. When you have completed the programming, there, uh, turn the ignition to off or wait 20 seconds. Press any button on the remote. All remote. If you have there, it'd be press one by one. So, so we can do that then. So let's pull this out and let's. Uh, Boom, okay, that part seems to work. That was pretty easy. Just eight times, cycle the thing, cycle the ignition, leave it on on, and then you just hit, you just run through all the buttons. So let's go unlock, lock, trunk. Yeah, that works. Let's go, I gotta go shut the trunk down though. Still. Yeah, okay, so that seems, that part was super simple. That's nice, I got my original four mats in there. So let's go lock, 
See, now, w one other thing I'm, I'm going to have to test is going to be to see how long or how much further or shorter this one is in terms of how, how the distance it'll work till. There's our lock. See, there's our tail light sequencers again. There's the lock, boom, trunk. So you do have to hit it twice. See, on the original Ford one, it does say two times, but it doesn't say here. You just kind of have to know. Boom. One thing I'm curious, the panic button isn't on the the original Ford remote, so I don't know if it will do something or not. Let's lock it here. Okay. Oh, so the panic does work even though it's not on the original one. That doesn't give it quite enough time to get that last light. <laughs> ah, so that's, that's kind of neat. Okay. That, that works great. That part works good. Oh, okay. Because as you can see on the factory one here, there is no, oh wait, there is a panic button. I didn't know that. Huh. I never even knew that. Huh. Uh oh. Huh. Never knew there was an actual panic button. See now, I'll see if this even goes in. Oh, it does go in. Okay, so so you did cut it good because it does a little bit. It's a little bit hard at first. It's like it's I don't know. Maybe it just needs to be uh, wired down a little bit. Maybe too sharp needs to be because these ones uh, it does kind of get have to get past that a little bit. That doesn't stick out too far, actually. So that part's good. It does fit. All right, now we get to do the transponder programming, which will actually let the car start. Because right now, there's the security chip in this is not matched to the transponder in here, so it won't start. Even if I it isn't neutral, if I push on the clutch and try to start it, I get nothing. And the, but there's a little black blinking security light. So. So we got the buttons program. Now let's go on to the transponder part. Both keys will need to be used. Got them both. Insert one of the pre-chrome tra transponder keys and turn the ignition to on. Leave on for at least one second. I wait until the red symbol on the image extinguishes. Okay. So you're going to want to put the next key in. Take that one, put it, turn it on, turn it off, pull it out. We're going to put in the next one. Within five seconds of that one, and on. Then remove the second key. Within 10 seconds, insert the new key in addition to the on. If you are su successful, the red key symbol will illuminate, then extinguish after about a second. So that's really all you have to do then. So. Okay, out. We'll flip in the other one. And out. And then now we gotta flip in this one. See if it, yep, it did go out. So, it, so it is out, so we will see, let's see if it starts. Oh, it, do, it does want to start, but the battery's dead. Because <laughs> it's been cold and I haven't started it lately, so. But it, do, it so it does work just fine. Both functions now work just fine. So I, I would have thought for the transponding, that transponder program, you'd be a little bit more tough than that than just putting, putting your first key in the, oh, sorry, you get my phone call. 